fresh. John, there's been a murder. Who? A man called Hammond, salesman from Los Angeles. Where did it happen? Out on Vasquez Road. He must have made the wrong turn last night and ran out of gas. Yeah? Something attacked him in his car. But something? What do you mean, something? That's it. We don't know what it was. But it practically tore off the roof, broke through the windshield, and mangled his body so badly he didn't even look human. Now, we found some tracks. I'd like you to take a look at them. Sure, come on. Well, the way you described the killing, it could sound like a leopard. Well, these aren't leopard tracks, are they? No, no. They bear some resemblance to the tracks of a wolf. But it'd have to be enormous. Look how deep that claw mark is. Yeah? No, no, it can't be a wolf because even allowing for the possibility of size, the pads are different. See, that's not a wolf pad. Listen, I think we ought to get Byron in on this. Why don't you give him a call? Well, Mr. Byron is busy. You asked him? Yeah, I asked him. What's the matter with him? I don't know. It's just as if the animal changed its scent. How can an animal change its scent? It doesn't make sense, does it? No. If there isn't any water around here they could have crossed. Hey, what kind of an animal are we looking for anyway? First it nearly rips the roof off that car. Then it breaks through the windshield and tears up that guy like it did. Now its scent disappears. What did it do? Fly away? Charlie, go help with the dogs. 
sorry. Well, what did it do? Thank you. Hi, Sandy. Coffee, sir? Coffee, sir? Um, no. Dinner, Friday night. Sorry, that's out of stock. Oh, you're angry at me. No! I like not hearing from you for weeks at a time. Oh, come on, Sandy. You know I'm working on a book. I haven't been out of the house in three weeks. I didn't know that paralyzed your dialing finger. Oh, um, I should have phoned, and I didn't phone. However. I'm busy Friday night. I have to grind coffee beans. Dinner Friday night. That has got to be more interesting than grinding coffee beans. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I let you do this to me. trying to tell me that thing flew away again? I'll take your choice. Would you rather believe it erased its own tracks? Vernon, any way you look at it, the tracks go from four feet to two feet to nothing, period. I'm sorry, Vern. I haven't been much help, and I know it. You did the best you could. Nobody could have followed those tracks any better than you. I don't know. I think maybe this afternoon I'm going to take a drive out to Byron's and see if he has any suggestions. Good luck. Ah, he's not that bad. You just have to know him. Uh-huh. Well, if he tells you anything, let me know. 
I will. Thanks for the lift. John, you're absolutely certain you don't know what kind of an animal it was? No. But there is something else. What? Look, when the animal was walking, its tracks were deeper than they should have been. I don't follow you. Now uh, look, when it was running on all fours, it left the track of an animal weighing 100 pounds or so. So what? When it walked upright on two legs, it weighed more than I do. I thought you might be around. <laughs> I should have known I can't sneak up on you. John, how are you? Oh, fine, Byron. So, Bella's persuaded you to join the hunt then. Well, how'd you know? Why else would you be here? Besides, I saw your name in the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, in on it. Good. At least you haven't entirely lost your urge to action, then. John, it's good to see you. Come on inside. Been a long time, Byron. What have you been doing with yourself? Well, I'm getting ready for my trip to South America. I thought you were going to Africa. South America is better, less familiar, more demanding. I plan to cross the Mato Grosso country there. Mato Grosso? A lot of people have disappeared in there. Yes, I know. How's the hunting business? Lucrative. How's the uh, story writing business? Still living. Is it? How about a scotch? Sure. Hello, Grant. How are you? Very well, thank you, Mr. Weatherby. It's been a long time. It's good to see you again, sir. You're looking quite well. Thank you. Good to see you. So, tell me about this killer animal. You've seen its tracks? Yeah. And? I don't know. Thanks. You couldn't identify him? Well, the tracks look something like a wolf, but I don't think it's a wolf. What do you think it is? Huh. You tell me. It changed its scent, Byron, so the dogs couldn't follow it. It ran on four legs, walked upright on two, and then erased its own tracks. But that's fantastic. Then help me find it. I can't. I've got too much to do to get ready for my trip. You can't find time for something like this. That's hard to believe. I'm busy, John. So, what else? Have there been any further signs of this animal since the killing? Make that plural. They've got its second victim last night. Where? About a mile from the first killing. Same method of kill? The same method of mangle would be a better description. Well, both killings occurred within a mile of each other. That narrows down the field. Undoubtedly, the animal's got a cave within that area. That limitation should help you to find it before it kills a third time. The third time? You know that once an animal starts killing humans, it never stops.
Do you see anything? The front door's locked, isn't it? Yeah, it's locked. Let me go check, make sure, though. I'm coming with you. Who's out there? You better not have any funny ideas. I got a gun in here. I know someone is out there. Any idea where this animal comes from? Sandy, nobody has any idea what this animal is, much less where it comes from. You know, in 20 years of hunting, I have never run across a predator even remotely like this one. And it's driving me nuts that I can't run it down. Then why doesn't your friend Byron help you? I don't know. I don't know how he can resist the challenge. You know, I'm going to go to my grave not understanding how the two of you could be so close for so many years. You have to understand him. He's a... Speak of the devil. Hmm. Here he comes. Byron. Good evening. Came into town to get some supplies. Doors are closed, so I'd drop in for a drink. Don't worry, I'm not gonna join you. Oh, sit down. No, come on, sit down. Was I right? About what? The animal killing again. Yeah, yes you were. Fascinating creature or whatever it is. You find it fascinating that four human beings have been slaughtered? Some people are saying it was a werewolf. Did you know that? <laughs> yes, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I don't scoff. Remember that wolf we went after in Canada? How the Indians said that it wasn't a wolf at all, but a trapper turned into a wolf? Mm-hmm. Now, there was an animal. There was a man killer. You never could accept that the life of a predator is superior to that of its victim, could you? What? I said he could never appreciate I, you. I heard what you said. It's believing you that I'm having trouble with. That's a lovely dress you wear. Well, Byron and I never really thought too much alike. We almost did once. But you preferred to wait in the trees. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the allure that mortal danger holds for you always left me a little bit cool. But only in mortal danger are we alive, John. Only by risking our lives can we truly appreciate them. What kind of a life are you leading now? What kind of life is anyone around here leading now? Emasculated by society and safety? Well, uh, we're enjoying it. <laughs> I give life as well as take it. 
The animals I kill are never more alive than in that instant before my bullet strikes them. Come on. And I'm never more alive than in that instant when they could kill me just as easily. I couldn't help overhearing you, sir. You're a hunter, aren't you? Why do you want to know? Perhaps you could tell me what the pleasure is that full-grown and presumably intelligent men get from murdering defenseless animals. Hey, look, I think you better just... Uh... I didn't mean to intrude, of course, but tell me. Is it a sense of power? A sense of accomplishment? Or is it a regression to the past when killing animals was a way of life? Sir? I couldn't tell you that. I thought not. I thought not, sir. I could show you, though. I beg your pardon? The pleasure I get from killing. I could show you what that is. Though I doubt you'd die with the nobility of an animal. Shall I show you? Shall I? Byron. <laughs> You're pretty good. You almost had me convinced. Would have been so easy. He's crazy, I'm telling you. He's always been like that, Sandy. He's got a strange sense of humor. That's humor? Well, to him it is, yes. You don't know him that well. You haven't seen the things that he's done. You know that wolf he was talking about, the, the one in Canada? What about it? Well, in order to kill it, he waited for it all night on the ground beside some bait. A killer wolf, a real terror. I waited up in a tree. That's where anyone in his right mind would wait. Well, not according to Byron. See, the wolf had to have the same chance to live that he did. Him with a rifle? With one bullet in it. Oh, am I supposed to admire that? Well, not admire it, maybe, but respect it. I got badly bitten by that wolf. They were so close together, I couldn't get in a shot. Byron finished it off with a hunting knife. He came very close to dying.
prowling around outside. I thought I heard something when I when I was in the bedroom, and then I went into the kitchen, and well, I looked out the window, and I, I thought I saw something. No, I'm not being silly. John, you've got to come over. I'll be right over. Wait a minute, will you? You believe it. Look where they go. Wasting our time trying to follow that animal, Vern. We're gonna have to attract it. You set traps. No, I'm not talking about traps. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sandy. I want you to get some things together. You're going to stay at my place for a while. Okay? Correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I got a feeling you're going out looking for this animal yourself. What else is left to do? I'm putting on a curfew. No one in the hills after dark. I expect you to abide by it like everyone else. I'll see you, Vern.
Evening, John. I guess you forgot about the curfew. you want me to do? Well, I didn't want you to call the sheriff. I'm very capable of taking care of myself, Sandy. And I'm sorry. I didn't realize my caring about you would be so upsetting. All right, I'm tired. I'm going home and get some sleep. I'll see you later. John? Hmm? You're not going to like this. Well, don't tell me. I think it's Byron. What's Byron? I think he's behind the killings. Well, why was I attacked right after we saw him in the restaurant? Well, you told me he was badly bitten by a wolf in Canada, and you also said... Oh, you're not going to start that werewolf business, are you? Well, I don't know what I'm starting on or what I believe, but he said that the wolf had... Hi. Am I interrupting anything? No, no, no. Uh, now, I'm going to get some sleep. Do not go back to your house. Bye, Sammy. What was that all about? Uh, nothing. Didn't sound like nothing. What was that about a werewolf? She said that she tells you everything. She's decided that Byron's a werewolf. How about that? You're not laughing, Vernon. John, I wonder if you'd ride out to Byron's with me this afternoon. What for? Just to talk to him. I'll pick you up about 2 o'clock, all right? Whatever you say, Vern. Interesting. That's all you've got to say? What would you like for me to say? Well, how about you be glad to help us? It's not my concern. I don't get you. Four of your neighbors have been violently killed in the last ten days, and that is not your concern? Oh, you're angry. That's good. I like to see a man in anger. It's a living emotion. Living emotion? What the hell are you talking about? Are you going to help us or not? Not. Thank you very much, Mr. Byron. That's all I wanted to know. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Doesn't any of this bother you at all? No, I'm enjoying it. Enjoying? Yes, enjoying it. I'm enjoying seeing people feel anger, fear, agitation. It means they're alive, John. Maybe for the first time in years. John. Just in case you're thinking about going after that animal yourself. A good hunter is never sure of anything except that his prey will do the unexpected. That is some friend you've got there. No, he's not my friend. I wonder if he ever was. Who's the guy that works for him? Grant? What about him? The whole time we were there, he was watching us. Yeah, he's a little odd. But then so is his master. 
You know how Byron hired him? Uh-huh. They met in a bar one night. They got to drinking. Byron pulled one of his old stunts. He was going to arm wrestle him for the drinks. Always had a big thing about arm wrestling. Well, it took him ten minutes to put Grant down. And that impressed him so much, he hired him. Well, your weird friend doesn't know it. But I'm going to keep a close eye on him from now on. What's the matter? Charlie, are you crazy sneaking up on me? <laughs> Getting a little edgy in your old age, huh? That is not funny. Anything happening? No, nothing. Look, keep an eye on the place. I'll see you tomorrow. Right.
right, any further questions? Yes. Why don't you answer the first question? Somebody's got to know what's killing these people. Gentlemen, you've been told what it is. An animal of some sort. An animal outmaneuvering your entire department? How big a fool do you think we are out here? I just received a wire from Sacramento. The governor has declared this area in a state of emergency. The National Guard will be brought in. Armed with silver bullets? Now, some of you may think this situation is very funny, but we don't. There have been five brutal slayings, including one of our own men. We don't find that very human. Now, the National Guard will commence operations within three days. End of report. Is it true you heard the howling of a wolf last night, Mr. Weatherby? Yes. You think the killer is a wolf? No. A werewolf? Look, you got everything you needed inside. Look, I just want to ask you, I what told you to get out of here. This town is really stirred up. It sure is. Well, I'm glad the governor called the guard in. Yeah? What's the matter? Don't you think there'll be any help? No, I don't. That's good news, John. Yeah. Uh, well... I'll see you later. Goodbye, Sandy. Bye, Bird. Quite a turnout. What are you doing here, Byron? Since 7 o'clock this morning, I've been answering your Sheriff Bell's questions. I'm going to tell you something. Before this is over, you're going to be answering a lot more. You know where I live, Sheriff. But next time, I suggest you bring a warrant. Hey John, I've got to go back inside. Will you wait for me? Sure. Look at those faces. Oh, yeah, don't tell me they're alive. Alive with fear. Alert to the possibility of death hanging over their heads. And you think that's just marvelous? It is marvelous, John. When is a man more alive than on his way to the gallows? What cigarette tastes as good as that last one while the firing squad is waiting? You know, in a way, these killings may be of benefit to everybody. Well, good to see you again, John. Sandy. It's him? I know it's him. So I almost wish it were. Can't you admit that it's even possible? What, that Byron's a werewolf? I never said that. I said... Well, what did you say? What do you want from me? A little common sense. If Byron isn't involved, and he's such a good friend, why does he keep refusing to help you? I guess there's only one way that I'm going to satisfy you. Mr. Weatherby, how are you, sir? Come here. Twice in one day? To what do I owe the pleasure? It's time for you to help me find the animal, Byron. You can't tell me it's not your concern anymore. Excuse me, sir. John, can't you understand why I haven't involved myself? No, I can't. Well, I guess I'll have to tell you.
Because I hate to see you so much less a man than you were. Because I was hoping that letting you work on the problem unaided might help you to regain some portion of your once consummate skill as a hunter. That is why you haven't helped? You sound surprised. Byron, people are being killed. The deputy sheriff has been killed. Now, what the devil difference does it make if I regain my hunting skills or not? The whole area is in panic, and you're talking to me about hunting skills? You're too involved, John. That's why you can't locate the animal. All you're concerned about is finding it before it kills again. How foolish of me. How very unhunter-like. Now, are you going to help me find it? Last time we tried this, it took me seven minutes to put your arm down. But then, of course, that was years ago. I don't understand you. Of course you do. Can you still last seven minutes? Five minutes. John, if you can hold my arm for one minute, I'll help you. Byron, we are talking about killings, not about children's games. Basic games, John. The way in which I choose to judge my fellow man. That's all these deaths mean to you. You matter to me. Not those drudges who got themselves killed. Well? Can't you even hold me for a minute now? Is that how far gone you are? Good, John. Tell me when you're ready. Now. Forty five seconds. Fifty five seconds, John. Forget about that animal. Even if you found it, it would only kill you. said no. Damn well he did. And? And I am going to have a drink and a nap. And? But not consider for a moment he might be guilty.
John, please don't go. Changed my mind. Thought it might be fun, like old times. Okay. John, don't go with him. What's the matter? Don't you want me to help him? Just a minute. Come here. What is the matter with you? You've done nothing but ask me why he wasn't willing to help, and now that he is willing, you want me to turn him down. What is that? John, I'm afraid of him. Why did he change his mind? I need his help, Sandy. No, John, it's more than that now. What, what are you talking about? You'd go with him even if you knew he was the killer. Now, don't you worry. I want to take real good care of him. John, if you found out it really was a werewolf you were after. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Wouldn't it explain the tracks? Think about it. A wolf-like creature running on all fours undergoes a transformation. Now it's a heavier, two-legged creature, but it hasn't changed completely yet, so the tracks are still unfamiliar. Finally, the two-legged creature turns into a man who, in order to protect himself, obliterates his footprints. Doesn't that make sense? Makes a wonderful story, Byron. Yes, doesn't it? Let's get at it. Shall we separate now? Mm -hmm. I'll make a sweep through those hills. That side of the creek meets further down where it runs into the road. All right, I'll take this side. Good luck, John. Don't forget what I told you. A good hunter's never sure of anything, except that... Yeah, I know, except that his prey will do the unexpected.
Grant? Grant, listen to me. I know. I found Byron's body. Did you really? Put the rifle down, John. On the table. Now! Back up, John. Against the wall. Thank you, John. That was Grant's body in your clothes, wasn't it? He threatened to tell the police about me. And it did provide for a stunning moment, didn't it? Aren't you at all curious as to how I did it? All right. How did you do it? To the basement stairs, John. Racing the tracks was nothing, of course. The change in sent obvious. There were two of us. The switch is on your left, John. And uh, watch the stairs, they're rather steep. Two-legged tracks I made myself. A simple matter of borrowing claws and foot pads from some of my trophies and fastening them to the bottoms of a pair of my boots. Most perplexing to you, naturally. You were correct about the four-legged tracks, though. What you didn't realize was that I'd burned and scarred them to make it more difficult. In that. Rusty clawed some reason for existence. To fill their empty minds with so much terror that even they come alive. And to bring my old friend back to me again. Maybe he's not the man he used to be, but we can work on that. Revitalize old muscles, bring back old instincts. Byron, don't you realize you have murdered six human beings? I could have made it seven, John. But I didn't want to kill your lady friend. I just wanted to arouse you. And now? You remember where you found that deputy's body? The clearing nearby? Yes. <laughs> Won't do you any good, John. It's empty. There's a shell box lying on top of a log in that clearing with two shells in it. I put them there earlier this evening. One for him, and one for me. We're going to give you a five minute head start. Unless you'd rather go to the Mato Grosso with me. It'd be just like old times, John, you and I. Think about it. The choice is yours. Byron, there aren't any choices. We're not going to the Mato Grosso. 
And I certainly am not going to give you the satisfaction of pretending you're still a hunter. No more games, Larry. <laughs> Still think I'm playing games, John? Pick up the rifle. You've got five minutes. John. Didn't you use that before? I doubt that even you would have stalked me if you'd seen a pistol in my hand. You wanted me to stalk you. Well, let's just say I didn't want you to leave. But I am leaving, John. You won your life. Cheaply and dishonorably, of course. But then every man places his own personal value on his existence. Stay where you are, Byron. You're breaking the rules, John. Have I? Or did you just forget the most important rule of all? Remember, the prey will always do the unexpected. Byron. You civilized, John. Humane. You, you wouldn't shoot a man in the back. I can't let you go, Byron. Byron. <laughs> 